we are live hello everyone thank you for joining this live chat let's talk shop your digital cx roadmap for 2021 a joint initiative by indianretailer.com and freshworks i'm charu lamba deputy editor indian retailer at indian retailer we have been helping the retail e-commerce d2c and consumer products community to adopt digital practices and go omni channel by providing up to date news in depth analysis research best practices and a lot more we also keep track of changing consumer behavior and overall economic conditions in order to help brands access its impact on their undertakings you can catch up with our work by subscribing to our newsletter on indianretailer.com and by following our social media channels facebook linkedin instagram and twitter so today's discussion will revolve around how retailers responded to the massive shift to online as you know covid-19 pandemic and the subsequent lockdowns have reshaped how we live shop and interact with each other and one of the biggest transitions so far is work from home due to which consumers have changed their traditional shopping habits and have opted for online shopping through websites or applications however at the same time this transition also cre created an opportunity for businesses to go digital So we have joining us today a stellar panel which includes Beam Call, Lead Solution Engineering at Freshworks, Dharmendra Khanna, Head of Digital Transformation SSIPL Retail, Ramya Lakshmian, Product Manager, Customer Experience Big Basket, and Akash Kumar, VP, User Experience Make My Trip. Thank you all for joining us, and I would love to extend a warm welcome to all of you. The discussion today will be followed by a Q&A session. If you have any questions during the course of discussion, you can share them in the Q&A section at the bottom of the screen. You can also participate in the polls which will keep on popping up on your screens. We will take the questions post the discussion. Bhim Call will be moderating this wonderful session. So over to you Bhim. Thank you very much Charu. Uh, thanks to everyone who's joined in today. Uh, we've had a chat before it's Been really impressive to have all of you guys here. You guys are stalwarts, stellar people in your field. Uh, very, very approachable. I've felt that. So we'll try to keep this seriously conservative in nature. We kind of go to and fro. I'll ask a few questions. You guys give your honest opinions, dishonest opinions, whatever you feel like. It works best. And uh, just as a matter of habit, just as a matter of some hygiene within the webinar itself, uh, I'll keep this going for about thirty to thirty-two minutes. by about 5 o'clock we'll wrap up our internal discussion and we'll open the stage to some questions in case i find some questions that are kind of interesting in the middle of when any of one of you is giving a discourse i might ask you the question or if somebody else feels they can answer the question just kind of pop in and answer that question we'll keep it super informal keep it as informative as possible for everyone who's watching so i since i can see everyone not alphabetically on screen in my smaller screens but i'll start with the first question with dharmendra and then i'll go on to akash and then i'll go on to ramya for the first question all right then in the second question you'll start with ramya first was ladies first so and then we'll go like that so that everyone feels inclusive in nature right so uh dharmendra we had a short chat before you know we got on with this conversation and I have a couple of questions written down, but I want to just kind of continue with that small discussion we had. Is how did, in general, the demeanor of your marketing or your sales strategy change when obviously a lot of other competitors entered the space? Once pan the pandemic kind of came on the picture, you kind of had to scale up quickly. What was the thought process behind that whole change? What were you thinking during day zero when this entire lockdown started? See, uh, thanks, Beam, for this question. Thanks, Indian retailer, for uh, setting up this stage where we can interact and share insights. And uh, thanks, Shalini. This is wonderful panel with equal, uh, you know, you know, presence of a, uh, both genders. I hardly see a very balanced uh, panel in terms of gender equality. Uh, coming back to the question, Beam, uh, there had been in retail. uh before 2020 also there was a lot of work that was happening on becoming digital having sales and service and opportunities beyond brick and mortar but the challenge was for, especially for for an offline retailer the mindset was stores are to service the customer which comes offline 
and work on anything or invest on anything which brings more customer on offline uh, their queues are shorter you know or, or the investments are on one click checkout you know there are m pause all those things were there but the investments while there were a lot of developments were happening suddenly after 2020 the first wave of lockdown i think 23rd of uh, march 2020 when the first uh, uh, india curfew curfew kind of thing that was now we suddenly realized we have all these things you know somewhere there in some stage and we quickly adapting to the change we quickly uh, onboarded uploaded all the catalog which was available in some form digitally the fastest was to convert the entire catalog digitally and then start moving on the channels which we were currently present so our omni channel pause was somewhere customer has to engage but then we took the pause to customers we gave the links where customer can see the products have a live interaction uh, or you know while uh, when one of the few or stores opened we we engaged with, with through uh, through web bots or or video chats uh, then whatsapp bots came in they create some kind of engagement and between those period when some business started happening or the sudden lockdown happened the entire focus was to have customer engage in sometimes a kind of physical and fitness activity being a sports brand we wanted them to engage with us um, the food brands engaged in home cooking everyone started exploring new new cuisines and sports brand in, indulged in uh, having fitness at regimes at home so that engagement kept on uh, so the, the evolution of of the entire the lockdown period last phase uh, was evolving from suddenly it, uh, a stop of your offline sales to engaging with customer digitally and then that engagement converting to sales digitally and now when things are opening up it's an amalgamation it's a multi channel approach there is very high share of sales from uh, all these new channels which just started last year awesome uh, and akash like absolutely you know continuing on with the question that i asked dharmendra but one stat i'm going to add on to that just for you because i know you can handle that and you love metrics so mckinsey came out with a report a couple of weeks ago about how almost 80% of consumer behavior has changed even with a platform that they have been native towards like make my trip big basket i mean reliance whatever it might be on a bigger scale like we are native to certain platforms but their behavior has changed post the lockdown whether it's i don't know emotional eq has changed iq has changed whatever it is so has that influenced as well with the broader based question as darwin yep yeah, uh, that has happened so i'll kind of give it a if you may call it a, a bit of a twist but first of all thanks a lot for having me uh, on this panel and uh, really happy to be uh, sharing these great ideas and uh, understandings and learnings with uh, so many people around here right so when you talk about the uh, the last year right like a lot has changed both at professional at personal levels for a lot of people make my trip has always been online right like so we are primarily an online company we have taken pride in that and everything but still lot changed so because travel industry took a huge hit there was almost like days when like zero uh, business happened kind of i think right as well but uh, all this was like again built in an environmental thing so basic consumer behavior does not change if you look at it right they want a great experience they want an awesome experience environmental things have changed so there are random cancellations happening because there is a lockdown there is uncertainty whether i'll be able to go there or not will i have a, a rt pcr uh, certificate or not or whatever it is right those are the things which started impacting right and because of that we had to figure out and create scenarios wherein the customers can have their peace of mind so i'll give you uh, one example very uh, prominent which happened with the first lockdown right like all the flights got cancelled and then there was this government mandate that uh, airlines are supposed to return the uh, entire money uh, to the customers because it's not a customer cancelling the flight it is a situational thing but this was not so simple right like so different airlines came up with different things so everyone started giving out those vouchers uh, uh, to uh, consumers 
one airline would say okay you can use it uh, on any number of tickets for any sector kind of a thing then there will be another airline which will say that okay only these sectors are uh, available you can rebook this is a voucher with you but only on these sectors kind of a thing and add to that this voucher or as technically it is called credit shells is an alien feature right like you and i also had never heard about that uh, before this pandemic came in so we had to actually work on our sides figuring out how do we bring in this feature into all our flows and we had handle all the airlines so we had to manage that and make the user also understand about it because user is panicking right like he's panicking my somebody's 1 lakh rupees stuck supposedly stuck right because they don't know what's going to happen ab kya hai ye credit shell what is this credit shell thing so uh, they are uh, really panicking so we had to build in that thing and interestingly enough uh, this is something which we always wanted to do but somehow the pandemic kind of like uh, made it faster hastened it kind of a thing right like so those are the things that we have to take care of there were n number of things uh, beyond this also like web check ins became mandatory we always wanted to do web check ins but suddenly they become mandatory so it becomes easier to get those things done right like was i remember uh, i remember akash in the middle like the you know you guys had also launched an initiative where you guys were kind of taking care of the last mile drop off for passengers as well i think you guys were right. one of the first on the grid to expose that workflow you as you said flows right you guys developed that last mile logistics thing that we'll get you the taxi we'll get you checked in yes. we'll make sure you get on the flight just to keep that that entire gargantuan machine moving right because as you said you can't just liquidate out everything that's in a corpus or in an escrow that needs to be paid off and then pay off the consumer again and obviously the consumer's experience from your end cannot change at all yes, like exactly. keep that yeah alive. because rightly so the consumer has dealt with us right like so they are right when they say that okay if i am not getting the refund i'm going to blame make my trip we are supposed to figure that out we are intermediary but that's again our reputation also right like so that's the right. reputation uh, we have and we'll have to have so that's it yeah awesome awesome uh so ramya uh again first of all you joined a little bit late on our practice session not to obviously say anything about that but in general thanks for joining us uh, it's really nice to have you uh an amalgamation again of what i asked both dharmendra and akash uh one thing i just wanted you also touch on a little bit about is within the big basket environment let's say you know the last mile delivery of necessities food nourishment how has that entire retail landscape changed so if you stress if you could stress a little bit on that as well like how did it change internally what did you feel what did you see what did you apply sure sure uh, first of all thank you so much for having me uh, it's a great panel and i'm very excited to share uh, everything we have learned in the last one year going to be a bit tough but i'll try to condense as much as possible uh, yeah same for everyone right yeah oh gosh, we can't even go on for hours <laughs> no this one year has probably taught us or gave us an experience of 3 years worth of stuff so uh, so at big basket right again like what akash said we have always been online so for us uh, it was the pandemic brought a positive change in the sense that everybody now wanted to shop from big basket if we are servicing in that area everybody wanted to buy it. but the biggest impact was everybody was trying to buy at the same time you know and the huge inflow of customers and the panic it was insane especially starting last march and over may and all it was crazy uh, so what we realized that and think about our, our scenario that is uh, we have probably lesser access to inventory we have uh, lesser people in our warehouses working and we have lesser people who are delivering for us because either they have migrated to a different city or their hometowns or they are sick right or there is some other uh, uh, issue that has been stopping them and we've had situations where parents are not willing to send their delivery guys to work because they're afraid okay so uh, that's one scenario and our warehouses need to maintain social distancing so you can't operate at full capacity you have to be at 40 50% capacity at max and the demand is probably 7x 8x 10x so this was an insanely crazy problem to solve for all of us and product especially in put you know uh, specifically to me it was very very insane um there were other problems like for example we have three different businesses uh, just to quickly touch upon we have the big basket customer 
app that you all use there is a bb daily business for milk and non milk subscriptions and we have a bb instant business which is an automated vending machine so which is almost like if you see a store right uh, so we took a big hit on the instant business because we were primarily sitting in offices and corporate locations but nobody was going to offices anymore so there we pivoted and we said hey people are sitting at home so why don't we take all these machines and put them in apartments you know so we actually literally created an unmanned store in a lot of apartments um and bb daily the impact was even more interesting again like was what akash said we got to meet our targets or things that we wanted to do early because everybody was not just buying milk anymore they were buying non milk so they would come to big basket and check uh for tomorrow do i have curd uh, and when do i get the delivery five days later no problem i'll go to bb daily and get it tomorrow you know so we so saw almost, of, almost forecasted supplies they were going for that forecasted supply mental like they were already in that place basically true now this is the this is the behavior we wanted to inculcate in our customers and, right. and it indirectly happened very quickly we were estimating it will happen over a uh, you know few years but it happened very quickly but the other interesting observation we had was uh, people had insane panic right everybody is coming every half an hour and checking and they are seeing no slots and they are like why am i not getting slots they are calling our customer service electric center they are trying to come to the app and of course the app is not able to take so much load at the same time uh, so for solving this i'll probably elaborate later in the conversation uh, we looked into other businesses that we have seen the the physical businesses we have seen like a bank and we like okay a bank gives you token you sit and wait and it'll tell you what counter to go to and you go at the time right so we said why can't we just build a token system which says hey collect a token i'll tell you when to come and shop so relax the token assures you an ability to order not probably just not right now right so we were able to solve the whole uh, issue of too many people trying to order at the same time and saying no to so many people around 95 90 95% people were not getting slots so we were able to solve that through multiple stuff like this and what we realized also is community is so important there are so many uh, there are covid patients out there there are senior citizens out there who are trying to learn to use online means to actually you know get their essentials uh, pregnant women you know disabled people so what we also did for them was why can't they just call us and on the phone we'll take their order we we'll, we'll do the ordering and they can pay at leisure right so those were interesting challenges that we faced uh, in the last one year i hope uh, you know i didn't take too much time <laughs> no i mean uh, i don't think any of us can say that taking too much time today the <laughs> subject is so massively extensive that you know bringing everyone together for this and having you guys speak about it is just wonderful in itself so uh dharmendra again what were the general areas where you invested in both from a set up infra point of view where you have to set up a new process whether it's omni channel you mentioned when you were talking that omni channel has become very important you have a you personally have a special focus on omni channel because you've seen it built up traditionally over many years which i personally also believe with akash was saying is very close to us right you guys are from the traditional retail mindset and then we have gone digital and then tried to hybrid it so what were the areas of investment you looked at primarily as the go to directives first secondary and then tertiary and what do you think is going to continue or become let's like, say which is number 5 now might become number 1 yeah so uh, interesting question been my personal view uh, has always been whatever requires lot of manpower or man hours or man days should be digitized or digitized as much as possible although i still also believe the artificial artificial intelligence has should have a limited use there is actual intelligence that comes in because for for us being in retail we identify a customer moment he enters his phone number on the pulse or a touch screen till that time the actual intelligence of that store manager or retail staff who knows them personally by name what purchase they have done what is their favorite and they can make out that what is that they going to buy today their intelligence so there is an amalgamation of both ai's artificial and actual intelligence having said that the adoption on digital has been on several aspect the first top four aspects were related to the sales how we digitize the sales and then our reports uh, the very important aspects where are we are digitizing now is walking trackers so we normally you see footfalls in the store 
you know somebody has as a security guard doing a manual uh, cricket counter in his hand or there are two pillars on the entry gates so if you go in there is a you know there's beep for a security or it just ca- ca- uh, counts the number of people walked in and minus the people who walked out and that gives us conversion matrix how the stores was performing what we also trying to do is digitize our walking tracker so we have cctv camera cctv camera we are we are putting ai layer on that those tools which can count the people who enter the store and give us also give us heat map which uh, counter had has more number of people standing and trying to shop and out of that more, how many people went into the uh, to the trial room or cash counter so those kind of algorithms are very early stage may not say p1 or p0 or p0 p1 but they are in our pipeline we are working on it it requires huge investment we are gradually proceeding proceeding on it but were, what are very important are uh, e receipts uh, touchless you know payments that has been evolving from very long the qr codes and uh, the touchless payment but more and more people are using the uh, touchless cards or you know touchless payment model and what we are doing also in return are giving them e receipts on their phone rather than giving them print saving paper was always there in our agenda but this has added one extra layer of safety and hygiene on not giving a uh, any physical re- receipt the receipt comes into re- their record they can claim their warranty and they can have that secured in their email forever and those are the Im- immediate investment that we are doing right now which are pre purchase uh, investments in technology post purchase and the vanities like uh, the conversion matrix bi tools and uh, uh, walk in trackers is on p3 p4 kinds of uh, investments are on such i mean it's it's very amazing that you know just in the short time that you guys have also spent together i've noticed that you guys have a severely sharp focus on not only building the infra but also enabling the customer to use the infra correctly to the best of the infra's ability so knowledge and enablement has been a very major focus for all of you which is very heartening to see because i mean i primarily came from an lnd background when i started my career at adobe and then i moved into product but i've always believed having superb infra which has auto enablement built into it where customer stickiness becomes just a matter of usage is really good and considering and akash obviously like this one's for you like uh, i i'll have add on one point here beam you yeah. always think that customer is not not aware customer is always smarter than what we actually think even kids even the people in tier 2 tier 3 cities because we are very strong in our brand lotto sport we are very strong in tier 2 tier 3 cities customer is more evolved there they are using the smarter phones smarter internet and surfing entire day they are, they are aware what technologies are moment we launch something the adoption is faster in ahmedabad than pune and hyderabad then the delhi delhi ncr and mumbai mumbai and bangalore which was our preconceived notion that the adoption would be there early uh, our biggest uh, uh, footprint on digital is northeast jnk jnk has been very growing very strongly for us very recently it started growing very strongly for us uh, one thing it's opened up and people are exploring new brands their their the, the things has normalized and it was always there as a market but was not able to grow suddenly that has opened up and we never thought the customer are so evolved their customers always are much far smarter than what we think the customer is always right right like this yes i did is still holding true and yes. and akash like uh, dharmendra obviously is from a very core hardcore hard wired brick and mortar moving on to digitize and obviously you see like having like let's say in a hypothetical situation me you and ramya have Dharmendra in our team, he'll be like head of fulfillment, right? Head of FBA, like something like that. And from a from your point of view, like apart from the investments we spoke about, like what were the major investments you looked at? Since you're in, since you're in UX and customer experience is exceptionally important to you, what was what are the channels that you started concentrating on, or the company as a whole started concentrating on, which started affecting post the lock uh, as once the lockdown started? What were the main channels you focused on? yeah so uh, channel wise again like we uh, we were always uh, online digital and everything but uh, one thing which we really wanted to work and uh, always was the agenda but somehow again as i constantly would be calling it out uh, pandemic hastened it was like 
automation so automation uh, was one big agenda uh, as soon as the first lockdown came in right like so that became a huge uh, thing for us the entire uh, post sale bit because we could see this is what is going to happen right everyone's travel has been jeopardized now ab when this is going to resume when this is going to happen we don't know so there is going to be a lot of stress on the customer care there is going to be a lot of stress on uh, rescheduling refunds and all those things right like so that's going to be there so that was the first thing that we heavily invested in it was a huge huge herculean task uh, that was picked up by the company across uh, brands across lines of businesses uh, we uh, took it in one go so that's uh, one of the major things right uh, became and also what happens is right like so uh, since you asked uh, about like how what do we consider would continue uh, going forward kind of a thing as well right like so barring some of the things which were like very pandemic specific or lockdown specific something like maybe uh lockdown rules of different cities right like because lockdown was there we had to uh, showcase those kind of things most of the other things are going to be there so these will be the kind of new normal in a good way not the uh, bad way we call new normal because of the pandemic in a good way because customer is going to anticipate and ex- expect this to be given to him and available to him so say for example simplifying cancellations and refund flows right nobody wants to go back to a complex one so this is going to be there we wanted it uh, always to be there because of the pandemic we had to uh, again faster it right uh, automated web check ins that is going to be there now nobody wants to uh, get into line just because like i have to get a, a web check in unless i am eyeing a upgrade somewhere somehow kind of a thing i don't want to do that kind of a thing right anymore so those things safety programs for that matter these may sound like uh, uh, these are things of the pandemic only but uh, you never know I, uh, you may find them continuing for a bit longer than uh, the pandemic uh, overall so those safety programs will be uh, highlights over there right like so these are some of the things which will continue to be there these will be the things which the customer is now going forward going to ex- uh, expect and these are the things which will make a good product eventually so that's uh, pretty much i think it's going to be uh, that way so or anything you have done right now is going to be there for the future also <laughs> awesome ramya your thoughts on this uh, sure uh, i think a lot of uh, synergies are resonating with what akash just mentioned uh, and to a great extent what uh, dhanendra also spoke about customer going completely digital and they were already ready it was just us thinking they may take time uh, what uh, we so uh, one of the things that happened for us as well is that a lot of people started calling uh, the customer care uh, and it just started you know going beyond what you can manage right and that's when we looked at automation right? we said okay we always wanted to figure out how chatbots work and introduce some self help into the app so that the customer doesn't have to talk to us and he also or he or she doesn't have the time to actually engage on an entire call and give us context and everything so we uh, picked up the top 3 reasons and the top, top three drivers of call volume and or chat volume and said let's just automate these flows and simplify the processes that power it and we saw a significant drop like with covid i think orders to call the there was a uh, sig- almost double the number of calls from before right the calls slash complaints uh, it just doubled and with the introduction of automation it is now the chatbot is now able to take around 15% 15 to 16% of all conversations with customer across you know social email whatever uh, all put together the chatbot is able to manage and that's just by automating three key flows you know so we have realized that wow this works brilliantly now let's do more right so i think that's one thing that we will continue to do uh, of course certain small fixes here and there uh, needs to be done but overall fantastic uh, outcomes and the other thing we realized is that uh, even in the ordering process or post order uh, can we bring more efficiencies can we uh, so during covid for instance we wanted to fulfill as many orders as possible so we were trying to increase efficiencies of say a biker uh, to say how many more orders can he carry what is the right mix to not burden him and at the same time help as many customers as possible 
So that's another piece which we solved and we realized it's extremely you know, efficient and there is no reason why it shouldn't continue. It's both good for him. Uh, it could be the way we pay him like, uh, or the num how we package each orders, right? And how we essentially uh, decide what kind of orders go to a bike versus a van. So all of these efficiencies are going to continue. And in the same okay. way, I'll touch upon instant business, right? The vending machine, automated vending machine we spoke about. The use case we had thought of earlier was only of a corporate or a you know co-living space where youngsters are there and they are thinking, oh, I need a snack now. And they go to the machine. Fraternity, and fraternity eating, basically. Totally. You know, and uh, that was the only use case we had envisioned. Now it has become a store, you know. Uh, earlier, two machines were sitting and powering one floor of an office. Now 10 machines power an entire apartment. So uh, from a world where we only used to keep eatables there, today we are keeping garbage bags, uh, volini or mo, you know. Uh, all kinds of stuff, aloo, gobi, uh, not gobi, yeah, aloo and tomato and all of those essentials. So there is something in it for everybody. Uh, so it's a, it's a 10 machine store in an apartment. So these are changes that we have realized is fantastic, right? So you don't have to, with two machines, you had to refill the machine twice a day. Uh, now with 10 machines, you just have to refill it once. So cost of operating it is reduced and it is generating more uh, you know, much more stable income for you. So, I mean, in general, the vibe I've seen like across our panel today is like you guys have a very sharp focus on obviously ROI is always there in your know, campaigns or whatever programs you're running, but total cost of ownership is also a massive shard that you guys look at. Like you, you are owning businesses that sell on your platform or you're enabling them, but you still have a very sharp focus on how do I keep the PCO down? So. Now, uh, there are some questions that have come up here, okay, like, we guys have been going like live wire, so there are a bunch of questions that have come up, so, now, some of these questions are really good, okay, and I think all of you can answer them, it's, they're really, like, very general, and I think our audience has been really cool in that regard, so, the first question I'm going to ask is directly to Dharmendra, because it's been directed at him directly, and it's a wonderful question, it's like a legacy question, so, you, something we were talking about. And I'll come one by one to you, Akash, then to you, Ramya, also. We take it all, right? We're all in hybrid mode today, loving it. So, so sir, the remainder of the question is, he, uh, our participant, Anshul, uh, Anshul, thanks for joining. Thanks for being part of this conversation. Uh, he said that, sir, you spoke a little bit about digitization towards the customer experience, primarily. And I think the question is coming from that brick and mortar legacy kind of outlook towards as it moved forward, which you were talking about. So he says, how do you consider, apart from what you spoke about, how do you consider digitizing retail operations for brands post-COVID? So not just uh, a multi-brand store where infra can be taken care of by all of us together, let's say we can like put in like specific brands. What do you think they should be doing to digitize quickly? So there is a solution which certain brands are adopting. It's called try and buy. It's a digital screen, digital trial that, you know, virtual trial rooms. Uh, Lenscard had been doing from from very long time. You just uh, sit in the front of the screen and you try as many as frames as you want. It saves a lot of time. It creates a lot of hygiene and uh, gives a very strong customer connect and experience. So that's one thing. A lot of brands are experiencing. Having said that, I uh, there is always when you when a customer comes into a store, he is experiencing a lot of personalization and you know he wants to connect. Somebody wants to speak. You want to have a touch and feel. Uh, the inside is Roadster, which is a Mintra brand, launched a store in Indira Nagar, which was fully digitized. It only had a security guard. And, and eventually, they had to put humans because people were not very comfortable in just talking to screens. And they wanted some actually some level of uh, personal connect. At least at the cash counter, somebody is advising about the product, with, especially women and and passion loving millennials, they want to explore, they want to talk to somebody. And there are also different versions of people who say, I'll say, sorry, man, I'll take care of help myself. I know everything. You know, there has to be a mix of digitization and keep training your people digitally. You know, training, if I may say, even a six year old is getting trained on his schooling, sitting at home digitally. So we're making sure all the new technologies that we are adopting, all the learning and development is going digital to our. our store staff which is spread across India and so that the adoption is very fast and they can handle the customer very well. 
so the digitalization both this level that's a fan that's like a fabulous answer and i'm sure like you know all of us agree like it's the way you articulated the three main tenants that they need to follow like getting familiar with the digitization method enablement and then making sure you're upskilling your team to give that holistic experience so that's fantastic thank you dharmendra uh, there's another question here which kind of rotates around the same principles of brick and mortar how do we move forward but akash this question is from vineet now it's not directly at you primarily or at any of us like he's not address anyone but vineet's question basically rotates around where like if someone's been like a brick and mortar store or someone's been an offline retailer in your case they might be travel agencies for example akash right they've been out there for legacy years like 25 year old 30 year old companies that work for big folks whatever uh he's saying that i observed if i want to move to a digital channel the first thing that i have been told or the first thing i have been advised is that i'll need to spend a lot of money on marketing i'll have to spend a lot of money to get my inventory online obviously i can't do self help etc but what do you think are the things one can do as an offline retailer when you move online to start getting organic growth obviously not immediate but de facto stage wise what do you think are the ready to do like you know ready kit that they need to kind of figure out interesting question from you said uh, mr vineet jain right vineet jain yes yeah very yes. interesting question vineet and i i can tell you the direct to customer d to c model is gaining up very fast you have you know all my life i've been having mother dairy or amul milk and now you have so many d to c brand you know which you just you know build the marketing is required to have experience once right and then you become a brand lawyer you make a good product you can make a, and all your life you've been taking care of or of a newborn kid with with johnson and johnson or probably mother care and there is mama earth and so many ma- children newborn babies brands you just make make a new product which is very good have a right pricing and communicate it well in the mediums the marketplace is you make you gives you a window which exposes you to entire country in 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 the cheapest possible they charge you when when you sell actually a good product yes you need to spend some money to give that customer experience or uh, showcase your product to a larger audience but in case you don't want a larger audience keep create growing uh, uh, organically have lot of t- testimonials on your uh, on your website if you go to our lotus sports website Uh, loto dot ssipl dot in you'll see influencer uh, giving that testimonials so you can use influencers you can use your real customers comments as as your value proposition to market markets yourself and and then you can avoid spending too much on the marketing the best part is making your own very good product and d to c your matrices are d to c right now your milk your you know uh, big basket will vouch there was had been a time when big basket started and everything was about a brand and now everything is a different brand also their own private label also and it's i think the share of the non branded or day to see brands has grown phenomenally in every sector akash and akash akash you're on mute akash you're on mute hey so just to add to what uh, dharmendra mentioned so see again uh, it's true that uh, for getting any kind of significant traffic there is a certain amount of marketing cost uh, which is involved right be it seo you want to do certain amount of seo and uh, get some uh, web traffic over there or uh, scm uh, particularly if you want to do scm it's paid uh, in a bigger way kind of a thing those things are always there but again you have to evaluate right like so if you are a big brick and mortar sh- uh, shop as well so you have your uh, certain costs involved right like so and also look at the reach of it as well so what what is the return you are getting out of it so uh, a brick and mortar shop will have a certain reach and it will take a certain trajectory or time to uh, kind of uh, expand that radius whereas when it comes to uh, online if you want to get into uh, uh, online kind of a thing that trajectory is going to be far steeper with lesser amount of uh, investment that you would make so those things are also to be evaluated uh, totally yes uh, as dharmendra also called out lot of uh, businesses have started doing that but again they are putting in money over there that money uh, and that investment can't be denied uh, we cannot say that that amount can vary for everyone so it could be a, you can start small you can start big whichever way you want to do kind of a thing depending on the funding you have got but 
the reality is the investment is going to be there it's just the roi that you have to start looking into as to what is it giving you back kind of yeah and akash uh, just can you add on a little bit about as i mentioned this is a brick and mortar story obviously we are talking about everyone who's been boots on the ground and now going digital but mm. there's another question that's come up uh, that come up in the pod i'll just add it on to that uh, basically what they want to know is what uh, what advice would you give or what do you think tour operators or folks who have been who have smaller businesses right in tourist locations which you know we are familiar with whether we go to uttarakhand all the way to manikaran up in the himalayan mountains there are a lot of smaller tour operators that haven't been able to either digitize themselves completely or once the pandemic started that we are kind of push and pull and grab now when everything's time starting to get back to normal from a philosophical point of view and a technical point of view what do you think they should be doing the next 3 to 6 months to stay afloat and kind of go profitable from there yes so this uh, to be very honest means like this is one industry which i have looked very closely right like i am part of it so this has been hit like how kind of uh, overall and again everyone does not have the cushion that some of the bigger companies would have i am being very honest over there this is like the brute reality people have uh, uh, struggled a lot but the only thing uh, that uh, we need to do and we kind of uh, need to keep focus on is having the right business sense to it right like so there will be calls wherein like you will have to stretch you will have to uh, probably dig deep uh, a, a into uh, trenches but the reality is even for us so uh, supposedly quote unquote uh, big business right like so uh, in the industry at least so it's all about the focus on building the right product it is all about keeping the uh, right thing out and identifying the problem so see uh, when i say right product it's very simple uh, it's not about uh, a digitization hai ya uh, online hai ya whatever it is so let's do that that is the solution no look at the problem that you have right like so say for example suddenly you have like certain calls coming in lot of calls coming in for uh, some information on the e ticket does not mean ki ab aap bolo ki isko digitize kar dete hain or does not even mean ki let's put more uh, uh, call center guys over there right like just identify the problem might be in the pre sales the way you are selling it you are not probably giving it the right information so those kind of nuances we have to look into ki wo, what are those problem areas what are those and this time uh, by the way i am telling you from personal experience this is the time that we have got because this is kind of the lean period most of the time we are driven by business projects right everything is business uh, business business for everyone we big small whatever we are we are always driven by that this is a blessing in disguise where we got the lean period wherein like we can think far more customer far more uh, product centric kind of a thing right like even for brick and mortar even for uh, a- anyone so we have got that time so let's utilize that and that's something which we also have been doing we are utilizing that time in that that's fantastic akash because i completely you know it's been a while since we have kind of seen this paradigm shift when it comes to empathetically and philosophically influencing how product stacks are created and as you yeah. said very correctly it's not just the right tool it's how you use it and why you want to use it and when you want to use it yes. is make a huge difference so Absolutely. thanks for that answer akash and then when now ramya there is a question here that's around marketing from someone called tanya and tanya is very eager to know is and i i'd want you to answer this ramya from not only a marketing standpoint but also from a product manager standpoint in terms of what should you concentrate only on product or only on marketing or should you work cohesively etc so the question basically is tanya is asking is uh, do we think do we generally all think that it's a good time to invest in marketing right now given the pandemic opening shutting etc the uncertainty what kind of marketing strategies oblique product strategies would be best suited given the time sensitivity and obviously gtm and ttms are completely out of shape for a lot of growing budding entrepreneurs i can make out tanya is like a budding entrepreneur she has that fire she wants to do something so what do you think are the good things to invest in from a product point of view and are there going to be any changes drastically coming up or can someone kind of keep those changes in the stack for 12 to 18 months okay uh, i'll take a dig at it first from a marketing standpoint or at least a customer reach out point of view right now uh, 
things have changed so much uh, there are also certain new channels that have opened up and there are also so earlier uh, just looking into big basket ones uh, just for a tea uh, we used to focus mainly on okay um, when the customer comes on to the platform what should i you know show him or her and what kind of product should i essentially promote so most of our conversations are on vendor funding campaigns Uh, how do i increase your basket uh, you know if you're buying for 1000 for 1000 rupees can i make you buy for 1200 whatever right those are out of the window today uh, no but that doesn't mean marketing is dead that doesn't mean that the the tools are useless uh, fundamental challenges for businesses that have boomed in this whole covid era uh, especially e-commerce and various other uh, you know industries is you have got an insane really new set of customers who you have no clue about now what are you going to do with them how are you going to retain them because uh, are they customers who just come on board because they couldn't go out of the house um, and are going back to you know the kirana stores nearby uh, after the whole thing is over or is there a way for you to retain them is there a way for you to show them that online is probably better or for them uh, you know so marketing plays a significantly huge role there and clubbed with loyalty you know everybody has loyalty programs these days uh, it and extremely contextual communication by any interface that you have to the customer it could be a customer service agent it could be a delivery agent so these will actually they with so these are great marketing tools anything that uh, to retain the customer today so i don't think uh, there is a lot of room uh, in in my view for marketing to grow um and touching base on uh, akash's point right like so there are uh, travel industry yes it has gone through a dip but i have seen extremely beautiful innovations coming out of uh, hotels and you know travel uh, industry people during this time i have seen for example people leveraging tiktok influencers and celebs you know or your real influencers to talk about your hotels and they are um, making better videos than the ads you see on tv and they are like just walking with a great music and showing you how beautiful the hotel is and people are flagging those people are noting down ki if i go to kurg this is the place to go for instance so uh, there are insane innovations that are happening uh, uh, today because of this whole shift and i think there is a lot, lot of room to play with product with marketing to actually figure out what to do when you open up your industry or when you and and the other thing i've realized is everybody who has been impacted is not sitting idle they're all pivoting be it mobility right uh, so uh, if point to point rental point to point business is not working can i do long term rentals uh, if uh, my hotel is not becoming a leisure destination can it become a, a work from home alternative you know so i think such innovations are great tools today and uh, there's a hotel which offered a vaccination uh, package also yeah true <laughs> <laughs> you stay with us for one night and we give you a vaccination slot also like it's like hotel transylvania once you come <laughs> in you can never so leave. one one quick point on the question that was asked by the audience here uh, the is the time right for the marketing or not see in in festivals diwali in uh, it's india's festive peak everyone will be investing in marketing and you will have to invest something but right now every dollar is giving multiples of revenue that you would i have got in month last month or till 15th of june i have got 700% roi on my investment on digital till now i have never got that kind of an roi because people are digital when when it is a big indian online sale during uh, october four days everyone is online customer are browsing online and spending money is then becomes very uh, you know same advice that you spend money then because your your customer is right now and every time you spend on those days you add on new customers and you reach a new milestone so right now the time is good to invest once the business opens up probably then probably you can just you know look around and every time you invest keep mapping your rois uh, and kpis uh like i i'll want to take closing statements from everyone before we you know we're getting to the end of time but there are a couple of other questions i just wanted another collaborative answer from everyone because you guys speak very very deeply about how metrics are really important having the different 
chunks of metrics to track even from the ground up from day zero it doesn't matter about the scale of the business as akash mentioned small big it doesn't matter i may mention might marketing might not work product will come heavy the main is like roi roi which i think is like this best thing ever so akash in about 30 seconds is it just going to be user experience primarily that drives the next 6 to 8 months is it going to be last mile is it going to be the partner ecosystem or is it going to be a combination of everything that's going to kind of help the business grow but also bring consumers back onto the platform have that beautiful synergy that used to be there yeah so uh you partly answered uh, your question it is going to be a combination of everything it cannot be uh, one uh, thing inside it never could have been uh, even before pandemic even after it's not going to be inside us like that it will have to be a collective collaborative thing uh, the idea has to be having the right product fit right uh, understanding your users uh, what they want because as i initially also called out right like the basic consumer behavior is not changing they are still looking for uh, for us say for example they are looking for that uh, wonderful vacation okay so they are looking for it and whatever needs to be done over there be it uh, mixed channel be it online only be it brick and mortar only whatever it has to be done is it, what you have to identify what does your product and the connect with the customer require over there right like for us also very quickly i'll tell you like uh, there are different kinds of businesses right like so in a flight booking or a hotel booking i don't want uh, a customer to have to engage with any of the call center executives i don't want them to because these are like very straightforward bookings with a few clicks of their buttons and a credit card they should be able to in fact we are avoiding credit card thing also like oh, those credit lines and everything uh, you go ahead and uh, book directly over there kind of a thing right but say for example it's a package that you are booking right which is a complex uh, product over there i would actually give you that we want to have a bigger human connect we want to give you that assurance we want you to have that human connect and we'll doubly invest over there to uh, have the best of the agents uh, handling those scenarios kind of a thing so that's uh, the point here yeah. awesome uh ramath is a question that's directly been you know brought up for you a little technical sprint one would say is uh, so someone abhishek has kindly asked that Uh, when ramya mentioned about the token process remember ramya you mentioned when you guys set up that token process uh, he wants to know how did the team predict the delay and how did the product sourcing how was it basically done how was the last mile sourcing done for the product and did you make any predictive models for this in nature and did the team provide any eta that kind of thing so i'm he i think abhishek wants to know a little bit about the process itself and how you thought about it from a technical caveat point of view sure sure uh, great i mean this is very dear to me this is my product so i'm very happy to talk about it <laughs> so uh, let's so i from your question i understood what you're trying to figure out but it's slightly different in logic so earlier the customer experience on big basket is you come uh, sign up add your address figure out what you want add to basket the eta you see is when you will get the delivery so there is no eta uh, beyond that right uh, okay i place an order today will i get it tomorrow between 6 and 9 pm uh, that is essentially the eta you see today or in a general big basket experience but what we did so uh, when you place the order is when i need to know okay what have you ordered um, you know do i have those items and where do i procure them where I, where do i have to of course procurement happens way before this but uh, uh, which warehouse is it sitting where should i bring it to you how do you bring how do i bring it to you you know that's essentially the last my life to think about but in the token system we didn't have the luxury or forget token system we didn't have the luxury at that point to take lakhs of orders in advance because that essentially entails me promising you that yes this packet of ashirwad data is going to be available for every customer who is ordered right and like that around 50k sqs that we offer so that's not going to be possible so what we had said is let me break the experience of the customer this was a very big decision and honestly we thought our customers may not understand it uh, to be honest we made all the communication on the app configurable so that if they don't understand and we i made personally some 200 calls to see if they understood the feature if not i'll quickly go and change the words you know and 
make it more easy to understand because i'm breaking the steps you follow as a regular customer in ordering i'm saying uh, instead of clicking checkout and actually ordering uh, i am telling you click here collect a token wait in queue and on that day when i say hey come come and place the order so this was a significant deviation in from what our customers are used to or any e-commerce customers used to so we didn't have to take care of inventory at all uh, to answer your question uh, but about uh, abhishek how to answer the what did we think about we thought about okay how long should our queue be you i can't give you one month later's date to come and order so what are we trying to change for the customer that was a fundamental question right customers unhappy seeing no slots okay i want to give you some kind of a promise now but i don't want to burden my operations uh, beyond what they already are struggling with right so how can i improve your experience the other point we wanted to address was you are coming every half an hour and looking for a slot and you are literally panicking right can i help you there can i slow you down that we actually achieved uh, instead of the same customer coming 10 times to the app we realized that after collecting a token he is chill uh, he is waiting for a notification and the interesting thing was they started building large baskets the other interesting thing we also wanted to help the customer with right? not everybody i can allow to order tomorrow so customer saw that oh my order date is 3 days from today and given the situation i'll get delivery only after 2 days all right for my immediate needs let me go down and buy so that is another thing we want to tell our customers look we will be able to help you on this date if you're okay to wait great if not we are giving them an option to say go you know figure out what you need because it's essentials at the end of the day uh, to implement this what we did i think that's fundamentally a question we decided how we want to bucket our customers and we had our fiercely loyal customers who are not part of our loyalty program and there are people part of loyalty program and there are people who are neither in either of these buckets we said okay we'll create three queues we'll move these queues at the you know at a decent pace so that when you collect a token you get a date and uh, clear queue management of course slightly complex in terms of how do i show you the date and you know when how you move ahead in the queue and all that but effectively uh, we literally put people in queues and said okay because you are a extremely loyal customer shopping with us for 5 years you may get one day earlier than the others uh, so that is essentially how we implemented this great so last 3 minutes on this absolutely amazing panel like it's been like it it feels like tesla in the early days and something is being built in the garage so i'll everyone is going to take 30 seconds to kind of give closing remarks and I'll start with you, Akash, and I want all of everyone if kindly give closing remarks. There's this one last question from Arjun Puri, who's joined. It's last num question number nine. So to all the panelists, to everyone, a lot has definitely improved from a customer experience standpoint. Uh, there's a lot of cool workflows, cool products, cool stats that we have introduced that we keep looking at. Looking at the future, in which areas? are the biggest customer pain points going to be solved what are the emerging areas post that and what will be the sharp focus for retailers both digital retailers and offline retailers these three areas 30 seconds akash you first yeah thank you so i i, I saw, read this question it seemed very very interesting and a really good question uh, arjun uh, great question so uh, the thing is like uh, it, the entire focus has to be keeping things simplified for the user right like so nobody wants to invest too much time in the process everyone is looking for the end outcome right if i want to buy a shoe i want to buy a shoe right I, the process has to be simplified whether it is in a brick and mortar shop uh, or it is an online thing it has to be really really simple for us also like say for example if it's a travel i am looking forward to going to Uh, spend a nice vacation in a nice uh, hotel i am not worried about what kind of uh, process you guys have got and also what is the uh, kind of like safeguard right okay something goes wrong what is the safeguard over there kind of a thing so that has to be really really simple and as simple as possible so i'll give take my example and uh, make my trips example wherein like if there is something which can be done with a few clicks of the button nobody will be interested in going through and fighting that ivr uh, thing and 
battling it out and finally reaching out to a customer care and get it done right like it's not like people used to say earlier times so people used to say that indians like to solve problems by talking it out right like so it's not about that they didn't have the option you give them the option you give them the right way you uh, we invested heavily in that during the pandemic also right like so say for example how to make the customer aware so if it's refund as soon as i cancel if i don't tell the user anything his first instinct is let me call up make matter and see ki kya hua uh, cancel to kar diya but oh, what's where so we started building those modes around where and like we started uh, telling them up front saying that okay your cancellation is done this is the es- estimate this is the estimate that we will take to process it then there may be an uh, estimate which the bank will also take that also given so tell the user the right things tell him the exact scenario and he is not worried about uh, calling you uh, unnecessarily for that right it's only when he does not know he or she does not know they are going to uh, reach out to you saying that bhai kya hua mere paise ka kind of a thing right so that's that should be the focus that should be the focus where and like keep it very simple keep it very straight forward as much as possible and make his life of booking and buying simple <laughs> brilliant brilliant dharmendra what do you think main focus uh, as uh, as akash said it has to be simple your store experience if you walk into the store uh, you know you have your displays in simple way or you should have or i ideally most of the brands are adopting a digital uh, touch screen which is an endless aisle so your size can be stuck out your color can be stuck out but still you you can pick up from the curbside or can be delivered to home and more so as my tend take endless time in browsing the products trying but once you reach cash counter you want fastest checkout and that's the time you have to in- integrate the faster payment modes the faster scan and pause uh, auto billing so that the checkouts are very smooth so there's a lot of work which is happening there's a lot of work which customers are adop- helping us adopt and train more there's a lot of learning that we're having from these seminars and uh, these changes will continue to grow brilliant and ramya what do you think the future holds in general for customer experience and product platforms what do you think sure uh, i think akash and the narmendra have covered it so well uh, i think uh, there is hardly anything for me to add but having me and you are very me and you are very lucky today huh? like uh, the heavy lifting has been done by akash and narmendra i know i know <laughs> but the, uh, it, the i think this is this holds true forever but uh, now specifically because there is a huge digital population that has come in like i said earlier uh, i think the simplest mantra should be go hybrid uh, everybody essentially would go hybrid i think we will start seeing that very soon online folks focusing more on by online pickup and store or actually doing automated stores or semi automated stores and vice versa right the hybrid will stay in my view and it is a fantastic model to have uh, mind share as well as you know uh, wallet share of the customer the other important thing when it comes to just product in my view or the customer experience in my view is either automate eliminate or simplify let the customer focus on what is the exciting part of the shopping journey they want to like if product discovery excites them they should spend all their time on that but a checkout is the most boring experience right so there are so many instruments out there like you know the lazy pays or simples of the world which have just made the last click so simple that you don't even realize you pay like the most boring element of your shopping journey is non existent today that is i think the uh, the right approach to giving a perfect user experience you know uh, and communicate effectively yeah so that is essentially what i would say uh, and for the future i strongly believe that uh, um building a good user experience and a hybrid model will be amazing for retailers fantastic i'm we are going to steal that dialogue of yours the automate oh. you know, me and akash were already smiling like this is going to be down the road one uh the three of you like personally from my end you guys have never met in person before but i'm very very privileged that we got to connect on a forum such as this thank you for giving your valuable opinions and giving your thoughts on how you have actually built things it's obvious you guys have built things from the ground up it shows it reflects i'm very glad that you guys could give us the time come on the platform uh for the viewers who came to watch all of us today uh please 
go through this poll if you guys can really quickly. And apart from that, please make sure that you follow all of our panelists on LinkedIn, on Twitter, uh, whichever social media handle you guys are using. Please follow our panelists. Do give your views on what you thought about the webinar today on Indian retailers, social media handles. And uh, please reach out to any of us if you guys have any questions involving you guys are starting a company, if you're in a present process, if there's anything you want to know or learn from any of us, we are more than happy to help you. Uh, I'm going to hand this back now over to Charu so that she can kind of make the closing remarks. Charu, over to you. Thank you, Veeam. Veeam, it was indeed a wonderful session. I would like to thank our panel for giving some valuable advice and sharing such wonderful insights. Thank you. Thank you once again. There is no denial that it had, it had been a it was a different year be on a personal level or a professional level. However, it was amazing to see how during these times brand handled the panic situation smartly by migrating to the digital world and transformed their catalog digitally. Started, started engaging the customers via WhatsApp and adopted various other strategies. We strongly believe that the sector will regain its glories very soon. Going ahead, we'll be organizing many such discussions throughout the year 2021. To stay updated, please follow us on our social media channels across Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter. Thank you all once again. Charu, I'm sorry. There's one question that's come up from someone who's very excited to know about the social media handles. Can you just share that thing you had? Yeah, we, will, we have shared the links in the chat so you can go through this. Awesome. Awesome. Great. Thank you, Beam. It was uh, very nice. You've been a, a awesome moderator, and it was a very engaging session. I learned a lot from Akash and Ramya. Uh, thank you, Charuji, for setting this up. I'm really grateful to join uh, this session. I hope the audience and everyone has uh, got some learnings out of the session today. Yeah, I'm. I'm not going to. I'm not going to like throw the googly curveball. Like, uh, I'd love to do this again. So we'll keep that in mind. We'll try to do this again soon. Okay. Sure. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, guys, for having me. Yeah. Thank Bye, you, guys. Sir, Thank you, Bhim. Uh, Thank you. Bye. Welcome. Take care, guys. Be safe. Yep. Yeah.